Too late. Too late. Already went on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is. It's all timing, right? You got to get it out there quick. Technology is not my best friend. I'm trying to. Make, I'm trying to make friends with it. it it's tough. I mean, once you, you get it, sometimes it, you know, it gets a lot easier. Yeah, so. yeah, I'm working on it. It's hard. I'm trying to do four jobs at once. So. <laughs> But, you know, I'm, I'm good at juggling and time scheduling. It just, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at your site. If there's anything that comes up, I'll definitely uh, okay, uh, yeah. contact you. But. Yeah, this particular site is focused to the client for writing books. But understand that I've done a lot in my life. If you go to ArizonaAZCentral.com and put my name in, you will see a bunch of articles I've done. And, okay. uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'll take a look. Cool. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I know when. So, I'm sure. Picture deck before you send it to everybody. Yeah, I will. It's one of the early slides with T O O, where it should be two. Okay. Yeah, I put it together like last time. Chamber time. is spelled right the second time. Those things jump out of me. Drives me crazy. Take care. Thank you. If you're if something doesn't look right, set your resolution to a thousand twenty four by seven sixty eight. <laughs> We're out of luck because uh, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> like really, but I'm sure we'll be able to figure it out. Um, I think it's under uh, something settings, device settings. Oh, well, let me go get a clicker. I'll be right back. And this doesn't have an infrared, so is there a USB thing that plugs in? For the clicker, yeah, yeah. For I know. From this from the missionary, we had to use that for the fountain. We landed there and we're like, okay, we can't take off. Well, it's just a little snow. I'm a real thing. See the runway that's coming down really fast. That's just a little snow. I'm like, that's a little? We're not taking that. That's enough to make me buy a jacket. Yep. Like, hey, jacket. Not meaning to have you. Everybody asks you that. Is it 
Yeah, it's a weirdest it, selfie then if you did. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and uh, pull your presentation back up, I think. And well, bam. Just Ooh. try going left and right. And okay, okay, great. We're good. Are we starting? Are we ready to roll? Yeah. All right, so we'll talk about data-driven decisions and kind of how it pertains to development. And you can kind of... Uh, Let's talk about data-driven decisions. Let's just do that. We can talk about how it pertains to content, how it pertains to development, UX, anything on the web. So let's just get going. So who is this guy talking? That's me. My name is Greg Taylor. I'm the founder of Marketing Press. We're a web, uh, a WordPress development company here, and we have an office in Tempe, office in Red Bank, New Jersey. And uh, I'm going to play it a whole lot, and we work a lot of fun things. And what we do that's different than a lot of people is before we talk about or we talk to any client, we want to really, really hammer out what, what's the goal of what, are, what we're doing. Because, you know, I think, and, oh, I think my is really done this before. Because I think anybody can make a site look pretty, or anybody can make something look pretty, but not everybody can make it work. And, like, we want to really focus on making stuff work for clients. I swear a lot, so I hope I don't offend anybody. I'm also a kind of casual guy if you haven't gotten that impression yet. So if anything comes up, you want to ask a question, this isn't me talking at you, this is us having a conversation and a dialogue. So please interrupt as we go. So that's me, great. All right, ever heard of saying cream? Anybody, anybody like Wu-Tang? No? There you go. What, you know what it means? Cash rules everything around me, right? So let's talk about Let's dream. Any idea what that might mean? Uh, yeah. Data rules everything around me, right? I made that up in the car this morning. I'm messing with that. <laughs> but seriously, when you think about it, like us as marketers, and who's a marketer here? Who's a developer, marketer, marketer, developer, marketer, marketer, developer? Developer? Any, and every once in a while, you know, I'll talk to someone and they're like, well, I'm not, I'm none of those. I'm a writer. I'm like, oh, how nice for you. <laughs> That's nice for you. We're going to pigeonhole you over here then. You're okay. Yeah. Just kidding. Any writers? So let's talk about data, how data rules everything around us, and how we're, we should take data, brain data, and make it work for what we're trying to do. Data rules everything around me. Um, I'm going to use this more and more. I'm going to try to do this more. My lawyer's in the other room. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so there's three parts of this whole thing when it comes to what I'm going to now refer to as dreaming, as having data frame all the context and everything that we do online. So the three parts of this is, but first of all, I want to interrupt the presentation for a little reality check about perfection. Because I'm a big believer that perfection is the enemy of progress. So if you wait for perfection to get the perfect data set, or the perfect blog post, or the perfect website, progress is flying out the door. You're not getting anywhere. So please, we encourage everybody to move forward versus being perfect. So always remember, perfection is the enemy of progress. So the three parts of the data here. It's important to know what, your, what metrics are important to you. Know where to get good data. And there's lots of different tools, resources, and i actually share my favorite one when we get to that section. And then these two things are super important, but this is the money maker here. What do you do once you have all this data? What do you do with, with this data set and you know all of the shit that you collected from everywhere and all these other places? Now let's talk about what we can do with it and what makes it all work. <clears throat> so know what metrics are important to you. Well, before you can know what metrics are important to you, you have to define your goals. Right? And when it comes to development or marketing or anything like that, I think there's really only three goals that we have out there. And you know, we we talk about it always with clients and we make sure that our clients buy into this stuff before we can really move forward. The three goals we always try to achieve is conversion or commerce. Are we selling something? Are we trying to get them to act in a certain specific way? Right? Two, are we building a community around a product, service, or brand? Very, very different. Goals, very, very different you know, actions to achieve the goals. And then three, are we trying to push content out there for search visibility? So those are the three goals that we always hammer and we always talk about 
that we want to make sure that people understand and buy into. Content for search, conversion, community. Those are the big threes. So I'm going to interrupt this again. So here's a reality check about goals. Everybody, whenever I speak any WordCamp or any tech communities, uh, this is like the fifth time I've been speaking here. This is like actually my favorite conference in the Valley for a number of reasons. But everybody, inevitably, somebody raises their hand and they'll say, what goal? We left out a goal. Anybody think that we left out a goal? Our, our mom. The goal here? A lot of people say making money. How come it doesn't say we want to make money? And I always go back to generating revenue and making money isn't a goal in itself. It's a byproduct of meeting goals. So I always leave that off because if you get twisted and you say, well, I just want to develop this this way because we're going to make money, and you leave out the other stuff, you're not going to make money. So if we frame it in saying revenue is a byproduct of meeting goals, then we can start getting some traction and doing some good stuff. Because we all know that you know, you develop something a certain way and it may take longer to see the end result. The ROI, the play, it's a long one. You might see something maybe quick, more quicker or more hastily if you use like SEM and different, you know, tactics. So it's all about all that. So second part is knowing where to get good data. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. If you use shitty free tools all the time, you may get bad data. You may make bad decisions based upon the data. You know, <laughs> where do you collect the data? Anybody have any tools that you like to collect the good data with? Anyone? No? Okay. It's just me talking. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so here are the tools that I use. How about that? We'll start there. Number one tool we use, of course, Google Analytics. Right? Everybody wants to be found in Google. Google Analytics can do everything except for make me eggs in the morning. And actually, Google Analytics probably sometimes for a lot of clients, it does too much. Like, they get scared when they get in their dashboard and they see these things. They get really scared when they see a bunch of flat lines, like the truth. <laughs> <laughs> right? Nobody likes flat lines in their analytics, right? But we use Google Analytics a lot because that's the end all be all when it comes to web marketing. We, we really like that tool. There's another tool that we like to use that uh, kind of simplifies our analytics, and it's from uh, the Ver Levers team. It's called Blueprint. Uh, what Blueprint does, it takes your important analytics and it strips it down and it provides it, it takes it and it turns it into actions. If you were to do more of this, there's a good chance that you're going to see this. So it's predictive. Really, really cool. <clears throat> a lot of good people from the Valley are actually involved. Other tools that we use, things like SEM Rush, good paid search tool. Another great tool that we use all the time and other people, you know, are actually from the Valley. That's what it's <laughs> the other people from the Valley's Authority Labs. You know, Chase Granberry and his team here in Phoenix built a great keyword research and data set tool. Other things that we like to use as developers are uh, Crazy Egg for some heat mapping and some eye tracking so that we can see how people are interacting with sites and how they're using the site and uh, what's important to them. <laughs> what we want to do is we want to take all of this stuff and then pull it all together and say, What's trending? What, what are, what's important to people? How can we make the best possible product or project with it for people? Great. Knowing what to do with the data. So you have to take the data and execute strategically. So one of the things is that execute strategically also means you know you have to use a lot of your professional instinct and a lot of your experience that you gathered over the years and say, this has worked before. When I saw this data set, how do we go back and forth and how do we make this you know, work even better? So executing strategically also, it means having a plan in place, but a lot of that plan relies on you and what you've done before. <clears throat> so executing strategically, you know, always have efficient code. Efficient code is good code. You know, you want to make sure that your site's running well. You want to make sure that you are, uh, you know, that there's no hiccups, that there, you know, all scripts are running and firing the right way, you know. Nobody wants to get a call in the morning because of 500 errors. You know, when a server is spinning out of control, you know, those calls suck, trust me. Are you making the right changes? You know, are you making the changes that are going to then, are they going to move us towards those goals? You know, are we 
pulling the right things? You know, are we enhancing the user experience? And a lot of heat back and stuff. And Google Analytics can tell us if we're enhancing the, the, the user experience because we can then strategically position content, whether it's a home page or um, even what kind of content we produce, you know, because we'll know if they're coming. Do we know our conversion points? What do we want people to do? Where are they doing it? You know, uh, are we A-B testing these things? You know, great A-B a, B test thing, uh, tools that we use, uh, we use Optimizely. Now, Optimizely is kind of complicated to get used to, but once you get used to it, it, it makes sense. Although I don't think my sentences make sense. <laughs> uh, other thing that we use is Google, Google Analytics, their experiments. The great A-B testing tool. All you say is, this is the control page, this is the page that's different. I want I want to experiment with 60% of all my traffic. So 40% will be the incumbent page. 60% will go multi -verge. And then you can figure out, it'll tell you actually, you know, at the end that this is the clear winner. This is why. The other thing you always want to know is your conversion point. You want to have your analytics set up with goals. And uh, the best way that we set it up with goals is just what thank you page we're serving. We're serving them when they complete an action. So we make sure that, you know, we keep testing them even thank you pages. Make sure that when they get to that point, it, it, train, it pings a response in the analytics. The other thing is, don't be a chicken to change. Like, just because things are going one way, things are going working for the site, don't be afraid to tweak things. Don't be afraid to experiment with things. If you're afraid to experiment with things, you're never going to move forward. The other thing is, if you're afraid to experiment with things, let's go back to A-B testing. I mean, if throw a throw a B page up and experiment with fifteen percent of your traffic, or something like that. Now, when I say that, okay, let me back up. You have to have enough traffic, of course, to get the model, <laughs> right? If, if you if, if a site that you're working on gets a hundred hits a month, which is what three point three or something like that a day, you're probably not going to have enough traffic to determine clear cover. But if you're working on something that gets more traffic, we have one site that gets, you know. 300 to 400,000 uniques a month that we work with. That's plenty of traffic. I mean, you. I think that even if you have, you know, 1,500 to 2,500 unique visitors a month, that's plenty of traffic to at least start to experiment with plenty. So, always, this is my biggest thing, always, that I talk about every single time. I almost have slides on it. How quick I went, we're going to have some time here. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of time. <laughs> Review, refine, repeat. So what that means is review everything that you do, all the changes that you make, refine them, and if refining means you know throw up an AB test, refine that one and repeat, do it again. You know, never be afraid to keep changing and keep moving forward. Review, refine, repeat. This this makes this never ends when it comes to marketing, when it comes to development, when it comes to everything. Because we want to review, we want to refine, we want to repeat. We want to know what we're doing well, we want to do more of it, right? We want to know what we're not doing so well. We want to stop, make it better, do it again, and then go back. Let's measure things. I mean, everything starts with measuring things. You know, you can't change what you don't measure. And without analytics, you know, we're all guessing without the data. So, again, perfection is the enemy of progress. I, I can't say this enough. Like, don't wait to be perfect. Or wait to have a perfect platform to to make changes, to do all this stuff. Let's just, everybody, I mean, every everybody is alike. You know, big sites, little sites, uh, my blogger sites, my mom's blog about quilting, you know, always, everything, you should always try changing it. And just try and always make it better. So, those are our yeah, slides that I have. Let's talk, let's talk about it. Anybody have anything? So, what Question, would you recommend there? for a small site for? Well, define small first. Uh, maybe a thousand visits a month. Okay, so a thousand visits a month is still, you know, decent traffic to do something. Uh, I'm assuming it's small business or niche topic, or something like that. You know, of course you have analytics and webmaster tools set up, so that's going to tell you a whole lot. But I would start A/B testing. I mean, like, so what's the goal of one of these small sites? Unless this is like hypothetical. So I well, sort of is hypothetical, but I do have some sites for. For example, there's one that actually gets about 2,000 hits a month, and it, there's no selling because okay. they offer classes. 
So there's either online registration, you go to a different website to register for a class. Okay, so that's a conversion point. Or, um, well, when they go to the online registration, you can't collect analytics for this other domain. But you're getting, but we're collecting the, the click that you get launch to the other site. So that's so a conversion point for that site. Yeah, but we don't know if it's actually a sale or not <coughs> yet. But, so, that, that's a disconnect right there, maybe in, in somewhere along the way, right? Because site A, that is introducing this content and bringing them to site B, that's a conversion point for site A, that they click on that and they go. Okay. You know, it's, it's a lot like, you know, marketer working with a sales organization, right? I can bring them to fill out the contact form, I can bring them to call, but once they're out of my, my property, that's on them to do their job, right? So I think the first thing you need to, I would do is reframe it a little bit the way you think about it and say, that's a conversion point for this site. So if people are clicking on this button to go to the registration site, that site's doing its job. Now, on the site. You agree or disagree? Every, you no, agree, agree with me? Okay. On the site. There if I'm wrong, you just shout out, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm good with that. We can talk about that. There are several um, several places they can go. So okay. can you track that all together then? Or is there a way you can track each button individually? You can track each button individually as an action in analytics. And I have a, uh, familiar with GitHub, of course. So I have a gist on my GitHub. It's uh, gist.github.com slash grtaylor2. And it tells you exactly how to set that action up on buttons. And you can use it for buttons. You can use it for videos. You can use it for anything that's clickable on your site. So I'll steal that code because I stole it from somebody else. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't steal it. Um, I repurposed it. Everybody out there in Ustream land watching this, I repurposed that code. So yeah, I would do that, but I would consider that as a win. Like, you know, wins are so fucking hard to get sometimes in business and on sites. Like, that's a win. Like, if I had people, if I had clients and that was my problem with this client, I'd be screaming from the top of a mountain saying, hey, this site's doing its job. You know what you should do? Let me develop the other site now, so that that job, that site can do its job. You know, it's kind of that stuff. So I think that if you look at it that way, as that's a win, and that's a goal, and that's that site doing its job, I think that's a whole different conversation to have at that point. Anyone else have anything? We got a lot of time. So with the A-B so. testing, what are you looking for? More views, longer <laughs> sticking at one site or the other? Great or? question. So that all goes back to what's the Right? So with A-B testing, typically, we do a lot of A-B testing when it comes around conversion. What's working, what's not working is, uh, like I have one site for one client running with a, a D test. <laughs> it's like ABC D test because we're changing, you know, one, the buttons. You know, there's a control color for the button, and there's a button color. Here. Second one, you know, some of the messaging is changed. So what I would do is I would all go back to what's the goal, right? So if I'm trying to increase traffic, sure. You know, if this if this page yields, you know, more traffic and a longer and a lower bounce rate, although I don't put that much into bounce rate, I do put some into it, but it's not the end all be all metric that every marketer wants to talk about, in my opinion. The other thing is is I would just see, you know, is it getting more views? Is it getting more Clicks is it an entry path to other pages? You know what's it doing? So, but that all goes back to like really knowing your goal and what are we trying to achieve. But most of the time, you know, A/B testing does revolve around conversion. Points. You know, that's that's where you know what people are really interested. Did I answer your question, or did I just skirt the issue and not? No, that's kind of. There was no wrong answer. Okay. Fuck, I wish. I always like, you should have A-B tested that. I should have A-B tested that. Well, let's A-B test that question. Anybody else? Who, who's got another question? Any other tools that you guys like to use for this stuff? As developers or marketers? And most of my clients are too small to have any time. Ooh, or money love those clients. To <laughs> Go about the second part of that. The like, time part is good, the money part is not so good. <laughs> but yeah. to analyze this stuff. Yeah. So I don't know 
was, for example, the one of the classes came back to me after two years, and luckily we had done really good organic type stuff when we set up the website in the first place, and she happens to rank first for most of her happy searches mm -hmm. that she wants um, on the first page of Google. So that's great. So without doing any extra SEO, she's ranking like she's paying quite a bit every year. Um, but when I went to her with just the bare minimum of data and said, you had this many visitors last year, and they went to these top pages, then she was like, oh, well, we've got to do something with those things. Because, I mean, that's like two years of not knowing what's going on right. on the website. So what's a good bare minimum to show clients? What metrics would you show them, and what, how often? Sure. So in that situation, I would refer to one of those predictive analytics tools. That tool I told you about, Blueprints, is a free tool. Actually, did I say that? It's free. Uh, it's free. free. It's free. free. <clears throat> so it's a free tool. And uh, I would show them, say, hey, if you, we're doing this, and you're getting this, so if you do this, you're, you should get that. Where's the ROI in there? Then let them determine, you know, how much is it going to cost you to implement, if anything, or your time just to consult through, right? And then say, you know, attach a dollar amount on it. So, you know, if your average sale, here's the greatest thing, right? You just talk to a client about cost per acquisition, right? You ask a client, hey, what's your cost per acquisition? You know what they're going to say? Half, half the businesses you talk to out there, you know what they're going to say? I have no fucking idea. Like, hey, well, what's it worth to you to know that? It's worth a lot. Agree, right? If you know how much it costs to acquire a client, you know how valuable is that data, right? Then from there, you can talk about, okay, well, if, it, if your, your CPA is... Fifteen dollars, but the revenue and lifetime of that client is because you know typically they'll know they should know how long a client stays with them. Right? <laughs> and don't and, and don't get that number from a sales manager. Trust me, yeah. <laughs> that shit's gonna be That's spun and bloated and, and, and all of that, right? Get it, get it from a CFO. <laughs> the CFO is not gonna bullshit you, right? <laughs> so you get that, and you start talking about those two things. Right there, that's where your value is. That's where you're showing your value, and you can justify, look, for me to implement this for you, it's going to cost $5,000. Why do you care? You know, business owner, your return on it is going to, should be X. You know, just because people own businesses, myself included, right, doesn't mean we're the smartest people, <laughs> right? Everybody's shaking their head or agreeing with Either you're agreeing that I'm not that smart or just <laughs> <laughs> Hey, maybe it's a little bit of both. I'm good. Don't worry about it. But I'm just saying, like, just because a lot of times we sit down, and especially when we get back to the goals, like, you know, we were talking at lunch today, like, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, today's a great day to come to your website. Right? Nobody does. I wish that they all did. They like, all did. What, why do they want to do that? Because something's broken. Right? What are we trying to fix? And the data is just that bridge to figuring out what to fix, how to fix it, you know, what's cost effective to fix, what the return could be. You know, there's also a lot of times, you know, the social media world especially, right? And the content marketing world. That you can't really put a hard dollar on what the ROI is going to be. Now, well, if I pay you to publish these 12 articles in the next quarter, what am I going to get back? <laughs> you know, try to you have to get the right kind of client to buy into. Hey, this is a long one. You know, this is like a long term engagement. You know, like we signed uh, in a different kind of space. We signed maintenance agreements with clients in six month increments because we want to make sure that we know exactly what's going on, so we don't lock ourselves into a year engagement and then we'll figure out that we got it's really longer than we thought. It or conversely. Where you lock yourself into a year long thing where you're just like, oh, I'm just going in there and pressing two buttons and charging this guy $1,500 and you know, I'm ripping him off, right? Nobody feels good about that. So it's a whole thing. Like, if we can measure it, you know, you can talk about it. And numbers don't lie. I mean, numbers can be spun, numbers can be, you can lock numbers, but they don't lie. You know, it's all about who's looking at them and where they're looking at them. So, anyone else? For we talk about music or football or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing shit gets boring after a while. <laughs>
Does anybody have a bike beans after hours last night? No? Anybody even know what it is? <laughs> yeah. So I presented at that last night, at Ignite Phoenix After Hours, and Ignite Phoenix is, you know, it's a lightning talk, five five minutes, 20 slides, 15 seconds per slide, the slides advance automatically, oh, so there's no jackass like oh, me going like wow. this, right? right? <laughs> Nobody's doing this, they just go automatically. So, For our Mac, that means you have to show your talk. <laughs> no, it means you got to know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> so I did that last night, and I did a, I told a very raunchy joke, and I was Thank God I didn't mix my two presentations up. Yeah. If I brought this one last night, they would have thrown something at me if I brought this one last night. What are you talking about? Dude, what are you talking about? No, but anyway, I mean, all this data stuff, and once you start getting into it, it just starts to make sense. It's like you can't, without this, this is the foundation of what you do. And like before we, <coughs> Mark and Press develops any sites, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to see the historical data of you know the property that we're about to rebuild or we're about to enhance and make sure that a they're going to share that data with us because look we're on their team if you don't share that with us there's going to be this relationship's going to suck so what we want to get out of there the other thing is we want to know exactly how people are using the site what content is most important what conversion points are most important how are they doing things and then we can start coming up with a strategy because you can you can design to a strategy, right? So I don't really care what it looks like until I know what it needs to do, right? So you can design to a strategy. You can't strategize to a design. And like so many times, you know, I we get hired and someone says, well, we have this great design we have this beautiful Photoshop documents. We get all these PSDs. We need to do all this, this, and this with it. I'm like, I can, but it's not gonna work. I mean, I mean the site's gonna work, <laughs> but but it's not going to work for your business because what it is is like it's pretty. It's it's a pretty design. It's a car with no engine. <laughs> you know, it's it's it, it's a Corvette, beautiful, no engine. It's not going to work. It's not going to get you down the road. It's going to be stuck. So like you know, we always want to start with that some sort of historical, some sort of data points, and then we can move on. Talk about that and come up with. We come up with wireframes, and our wireframes are ugly as sin. <laughs> There's a, um, that, so our wireframes are basically illustrated documents that are like a square with just a bunch of boxes, like spatial adjacency documents. It's just like branding here, conversion here. I don't give a shit about the picture of your cat. Put your cat there. You know what I mean? So we would we'll do all that stuff and then say, okay, design to this because this works. This is what's going to work. You know, and then from there, you know. <laughs> it's amazing. We give them like wireframes, like say, okay, you should design say, something like this, and we get something back that was like an alien interpreted our design, <laughs> or our wireframe. It's like, how did you get this from that? <laughs> right? So, I mean, it's, it's all over. Three o'clock, anything else we want to keep talking about? Football tomorrow, who the Cardinals play anyway? Detroit Lions. Lions. Scott, you're a Lions fan, aren't you? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you. Oh, you're a Cardinals fan. That's what I was talking about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a Bears fan. Oh, oh great for me this year. You and Chuck yeah. Reynolds can. You guys, you and Chuck can commiserate. Yeah, but he likes the Cubs. I try not to deal with that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everybody's perfect, right? Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out. This is my favorite conference. I'll tell you right why, real quick. Because this conference five years ago was the conference I went to that made me start my company. Because I met a lot of really, really good, like minded people, like everybody in this room, and said, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. And I kept getting fired from all these agencies. It was like, I was a square peg in a round hole. I kept getting fired from all these agencies. So, with $500 to my name and a laptop, I went out and started what now is marketing that after. And it, it's, this is my favorite conference for that reason because I met so many good people here and people who are still here, like Danny and Eva and Sheila, like who were instrumental in helping us get started. So thanks for being here, I appreciate it. And uh, have a good